Hi guys, so today I would like to compare the X98 system with the X99 and uh, actually this was uh, my old computer and I have upgraded to this one I mean the motherboard memory and the CPU uh, so this is just like a backup that, that's why it's a little bit you know messy and it's sitting in a box, but uh, this is the main thing now. And the question is whether it's, it was a, a worthy upgrade. And uh, actually, spoiler alert, uh, I think yes. So what's the biggest difference? This has eight core, uh, sorry, six cores. Just, just six cores. Well, it's not bad, like six cores and, uh, you know, multi threaded and this one has 12 so double that's that's a quite a big jump but uh, as you might know on the x58 it's relatively easy to overclock these CPUs so I'm I was using the git at 4.2 gigahertz you can do it almost to any CPU by the way this is a double view 3690 so the fastest uh, uh, from the line but it doesn't matter you can overclock to, to 4 gigahertz even an x5650 which is an, an amazing value still today and here we have a, what is it called e52678 v3 <laughs> okay so this is uh, also an overclocked CPU, but you cannot overclock it over 3.3 gigahertz because um, you know there are there are restrictions in this uh, BIOS and so on. Even though this is a hacked Russian BIOS, and you know it it was slightly overclocked already. So the question is. Um, is it worth upgrading because of the CPU? I think that's the main question here. And uh, actually, yes, because uh, this is two generations newer. It has a better architecture, that even though it has a lower clock speed, it, it just outperforms it, uh, even in single-threaded applications. And in multi-threaded, multi it just doubled the performance. So, you know, that out of the way, let's uh, take a look at the other aspects. <coughs> Here we have DDR3 triple channel. Here we have quad channel. So, this is again faster. And actually, in the Chinese motherboard, which is a Huanzi TF99 gaming, you can also use server memory, the ECC memories, and they are like super dirt cheap because uh, server parts are just throwing these out, they don't need it anymore. Everybody's using the DR4, so this is like $17 for one stick, and you know, it, it runs very well. So if you need 32 gigs or 64 gigs, you can easily build a system uh, with this much memory. Here you can also put 24 gigs, you know, that's plenty. But uh, memory wise, this is clearly, uh, you know, a better value choice. Regarding the motherboard pricing, it's about the same because you can buy this for around a hundred dollars new. This you cannot buy new. You, you you can only buy it used, but they will sell it to you about for a hundred dollars. This is the heatsink from the for the North Bridge. I got it from. A this is a UD5. I got it from a, an extreme board and attached it here. It's quite cool actually, I really like it. 
But other than that, um, this system has SLI, same as this one, um, but this has like PCI Express 2, this is PCI Express 3, SATA 2, SATA 3, USB 2, USB 3, so yeah. So this is an upgrade. And um, I think I will just show you some benchmarks and you can decide for yourself. Um, if you are an X58 user, then if you want to stay on the, <laughs> you know, on the Xeon side of things, because actually, oh yeah, that's important, I need to mention this here. What prevented me from upgrading to Ryzen from this one, because, you know, Ryzen is a mm, relatively good value also, but it, it's also ex more expensive, the memory is a lot more expensive, the processor t costs twice as much than this one. And the biggest problem is that the motherboards which support SLI is less, like crazy fucking um, expensive. So it's it's absolutely a terrible choice from a value perspective. But you know, it, it's an also another question whether you need SLI or don't. Because uh, um, the GeForce 20 series were clearly overpriced. You know, they just w were not worth their value at all, I think. Because here, I have, a, I have uh, used two 1070s, which if they scale, and that's a big if, but if they scale, and I knew that in the programs I would use, they would scale, they have the same performance as a 10... Uh, 80 super approximately or ti somewhere in the in, in between so the performance of these two cards is just incredible it's for me it's it's really 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 good but uh, if you were uh, building a new system you would have to think uh, about the 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 new geforce cards which were announced just yesterday so the 30 series and actually you can probably buy uh, in October a GeForce 3070 for around $5,500 and, uh, and have the same or probably some a bit more performance than these two cards so yeah if you have the money I would buy the, the AM4 platform on Ryzen you know, just showing the more expensive DDR4 memory, even though it's not a big plus, and have one card. Uh, overall, it's it's uh, simpler and uh, you know, it's also a good choice, but it's more expensive. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the benchmarks. So, okay guys, so for some reason the mic on my uh, desktop just won't work, so I will use my camera, hopefully you will see. Okay, so the first, first screen, CPU-Z, this was the old CPU, you see, 4.2 GHz, 6 cores, 12 threads, the new one. 3.3, 12, 24, nice. Single thread, 356, 58. Okay, next, uh, next picture. It's memory speeds. And you can see that the X58 system had uh, the speeds and the new X99 has actually more than double the write speeds 22,000, 47,000, 26,000, 57 so that's very very impressive of course because uh, 
this is three channel memory in one uh, hun 1600 and this is a bit overclocked and quad channel okay so next uh, this is just uh, Vinrar 16,000 35,000 <laughs> so that's also like more than double then uh, Cinebench I don't know what the hell happened to this picture but anyway this is also Cinebench come on this is supposed to be a fast computer it's 2000 with the old 4000 4, the new more than double 3d mark I don't think that's very indicative but still it's uh, 5000 for the CPU score and almost 10,000 yeah and finally this is the SSD you know with the SATA 2 these are the speeds with SATA 2 SATA 3 so as you can see this is a big step up also okay so let's take a look here at the games so first actually I did a comparison on my old system between SLI and non-SLI what's the gain if you have SLI and you know these games support it these don't so you can say that on average it's about 50 percent so the scaling is not great but in certain site titles you know it's better than in others and actually I didn't repeat this test on the new system but you know the main focus was here <coughs> if the new CPU with the lower clock speed will suffer anywhere uh, but it didn't there wasn't a single game where it was slower it was faster in every title in some titles actually it was a lot faster so it was like uh, GTA 20% Red Dead Redemption 28 that was very surprising but also mm, there were titles where the difference was small but on average it's faster 12% and what you cannot see yeah, behind these numbers that actually the X58 was enough for almost every single game so if you play in a full HD or 2k 4k doesn't matter if you play on 60 Hertz this CPU is enough but if you need more frames you need a faster CPU and actually this Xeon can deliver I, I wasn't sure uh, about you know the outcome but it, it delivers very well so I'm happy with the purchase and um, I can only recommend getting into this system especially if you have used Xeons previously so if you have any questions leave it in the comments I will read them all <laughs> there are not so many viewers so I will answer everybody okay so see you guys